Okay, you guys, I'm out here riding around. Um, you know, I'm on uh, Schoolcraft. Uh, I've, I've been driving down Schoolcraft, and I just don't understand uh, what's wrong with these police officers. Uh, Schoolcraft from Wyoming all the way to Linden, uh, they have um, street walkers. And, you know, they're saying that we got to keep ourselves safe. Some of these men are so ignorant, they're going to put themselves and their children and their wives possibly in danger. Now, these police officers know that this is a hot spot. I'm thinking that they come down here and do their thing, too. Uh, because the police station is on Grand River and... Um, Schoolcraft. I mean, Grand R uh, yeah, Grand River and Schaefer. So it's not that far from uh, Schoolcraft and Schaefer. So you know, I I'm trying to find one of these police that's out here uh, messing with these chicks because they're supposed to be protecting the community. I've been driving around most of the morning. There's people on their phones. They're not stopping them. There are people speeding. They're not stopping them. There's people out here selling themselves with this virus going on, and they're not stopping them. The police, Detroit Police Department is a sad excuse uh, of a bunch of men and women. They really are. I just don't get it. And then, you know, they don't get enough money, you know, for the things that they do. So, in other words, you get what you pay for. You definitely get what you pay for. Look at this idiot. You definitely get what you pay for. So, um, I'm... I just want people to know, you know, when you're out here, you see these street walkers out here, film them, take this stuff to the police. You know, they're like, well, we got enough to do. Uh, you know what? The stuff that you're supposed to be doing, you're not doing that either. Now, I came over here uh, last summer, uh, over here on Grand River and uh, Schaefer, to let them know about this woman. This was last summer, so this was right before the COVID had started coming into play. It was probably already in play. We just didn't know it. But um, I gave this man the lady's picture, told them where she was. She was on the corner of Schaefer and West Chicago. Are you going to go get them? And, uh, you know, he was really nasty. And I believe I have that video on my uh, lady, on my uh, at, six, at Stinson 63 page. But I'm sick of these police. Uh, I'm, I'm actually sick of the government. Uh, they do not mean us any good. They're transitioning us into a world to where it's going to be rich and poor. No middle people, just rich and poor. So um, right now, this virus is a way of population control. I've been telling you guys this for the last four or five years. The government don't care about us. They feel like we're sucking up all their water, uh, air, drinking up all their water. I didn't, I didn't know man had um, a recipe for water and air. You know, these are uh, real greedy, evil, demonic people that don't want to see nobody live with them and themselves. These are what you call blue bloods. These are people who do it to uh, their brothers and sisters to keep the so-called purity in their families, which is just disgusting. And they'll tell you in a minute, this came from, um, this came from, look at the police. They just sitting down there. They're not doing anything. And I have a camera in my car, but they're sitting down there and they're not doing anything. They're just standing there. So I guess when they see my truck, they want to pull over. That's that, I mean, you know, this, this world is, um, we're actually in tribulations. And uh, I've heard some Christian people uh, who really don't study their Bible say, well, you know, when the tribulation come, we're going to be gone punk ass. When the tribulation come, uh, we're going to be gone. We're not going to be gone. I mean, the tribulation wouldn't be the tribulation if the saints wasn't here. It'd just be all consistent uh, evil 24-7. So some of you Christians need to go back and start learning y'all Bible. I mean, and y'all been in this stuff for years and years. You're not Christians. You're just, you're just followers of a man that's giving you his interpretation of what the Lord said. Because none of you, because I was in a church where uh, I had a chance, and I was, and it was a blessing to me to go to this um, 
go to this uh, school where, you know, they, they teach you the Bible. And um, like I said, it, it's, it's another person giving their interpretation because if you're not led of the Holy Spirit, you're going to give your interpretation, what you think it means. But it was a blessing to have went to that school for three years. And not only that, there were Christians in the church that ended up going to the school, and I guess it was too hard for them, so they dropped the class. You know, the Bible says to study yourself, study to show yourself approved. How are you doing that when you're scared of the Bible? What I think it was, was these people got in class and found out after 40 or 50 years of being in church, they really didn't know anything. So it's just crazy to me how we don't look to the Bible for instruction, for comfort, uh, for prophecy to tell us what's going to happen. This is not it. There's going to be a second wave, and the second wave is going to be way bigger than this one that then came because the powers that be feel like there's too many people on the earth. Meanwhile, there's people on here talking about, uh, you know, the Lord, uh, the Lord is soon to come. Yeah, he is soon to come. So you need to get yourself together. I had to turn, y'all. This is a truck, big old truck down here. So, you know, like what I was saying is, um, Governor Whitmore, you know, I, I, I'm telling you, she looks evil to me. Just because she talks soft, don't make her be for you. You know, they're, they are taking away our rights. I feel like this, whoever's gonna get it, the Lord is gonna ordain them to get it, or because of their foolishness, they're gonna get it. So it's not like, it's not like, you know, God want everybody to have it. Whoever gets it, they're gonna get it. You know what I'm saying? Th through their own ignorance, or it was just, you know, through the foundations of the earth that they had to get this disease. So everybody needs to calm down. They need to worry about you know, how they're going to get closer to God. They need to get with people that's going to prepare them to get closer to God because uh, people, it's like the virus going on, unemployment is out of control. It's, um, uh, uh, man, there's so much stuff going on. And that's what they want. They want all of this stuff to go on to keep you distracted from this vaccine that they're going to give. And that's actually... When they give you this vaccine and this ship, if you don't take it, you're not a part of the world order that they're trying to uh, bring to pass. Now, all of this is in the Bible. I don't know why there are not more Christian people out here, you know, speaking on this. But, uh, you know, I have my show and we can't go into the studio and I'm not giving nobody a lot of money just to be on my phone through somebody else's phone to do a show. I'm not about to do that. So I'm going to wait until the studio opens back up. I really have a whole lot more to say because it's just out of control. Uh, the world will never be the same. If you're looking for us to go back to normal, this stuff is going to be here for the rest of our lives. Please believe it. Because until they crack down, it's billions of people. So just say it's 10 billion people. Until they get rid of six, it's going to always be something to uh, bring down the population control. The uh, Spanish flu. It's like every 50, 60 years, the powers that be come out with something to wipe out the people. Now, the Bible tells us a thousand shall fall at your right side and 10,000 at your left, and it will not come to you. If you believe that, you know, don't be stupid and not walk around with a mask and all that, because the Bible says to obey the laws of the land. But don't be ignorant. Don't let this thing scare you to the point to where you feel like, um, I'm not going to make it. There's a lot of older folks out here. I mean, they're scared of their wits. They're not living in uh, convalescent homes. They have their own homes. Uh, the only information they can get is the news. The news is not giving them the information they need because the news is not for us. They're telling us a bunch of lies, and there are other people. They're, and they're the media. Uh, they're 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 put in place to tell you uh, what what other people feel like you should know. Uh, this is just a terrible thing. Uh, I want my people to stay safe. Uh, there's a lot of uh, 
people out here that that's just so mean and and you know the Bible says that in the last days that um, the love of the love of people shall wax cold and that's what's going on there and then not only that there's a lot of people out here that's um, they're um, um, nurses doctors uh, lawyers police officers especially they're taking full advantage of this um, they're killing folks in a hospital. Uh, uh, when my mother passed away, there was, uh, they sent her to hospice, but we did hospice with her at her, um, at her apartment. But, um, in the hospice, u hospice unit, there was a white man there. His name was Charles. I really believe he thinks he's an angel of death. And I believe he killed my mother and, uh, Henry Ford Hospital in the hospice wing. I really do believe he did that because of the way he looked at me. And then he kept asking me, did uh, uh, did we want to get an autopsy done? And it seemed like when I told him no, my mom ended up dead. When I went to go see my mom, her mouth was kind of open as if somebody had smothered her with a pillow and they couldn't put her mouth in a regular position. So I'm speaking from experience. Also, my father passed away at Henry Ford's hospital. That is not a good hospital. Now, I don't know what's going on at Sinai. I've been hearing some horror stories at Sinai, but I will tell you that Sinai saved my life. Sinai Grace Hospital saved my life three times. I'm a heart patient. I have respiratory problems, um, and I'm trying to keep myself safe. But I am, and I'm not going to make myself so afraid to wear... Uh, I'm getting anxiety attacks because when this first came about, I was getting anxiety attacks. Not because of what was going on, but because uh, I had to stop working. Uh, because of uh, my underlying ailments, certain places I can't go. Uh, basically, my husband goes to the grocery store. And it's just terrible when people like doctors and nurses, even CNA, because I'm a nurse. and I was a nurse at my church and I'm a CNA. And... Um, they feel like they have the power of God and they feel like they can tell, you know, they can say whether this person lives or this person dies. Everybody in this profession is not good. I'm just saying that everybody that's in this profession is not good. Now, speaking of the profession, I'm in the process right now. I've been trying to get in touch with the attorney general's office um, because I want them to do an investigation on Odyssey education over here on, I think it's 18,600 James Cousins. These per these people, as you know, I was down, I, I, I started going there in November, uh, I mean, in October, graduated, um, got uh, a forged certificate. Uh, I was trying to go and have my, um, do my state exam. Now, I think Detroit Works and these people got doing some flim flam stuff. Detroit Works is doing some really underhanded stuff, and I'm going to get to the bottom of this. But all I told them, I said, I want to get my state exam. Because Detroit Works sent me there and paid for everything, they were supposed to pay for me to go to school. Uh, after I started bugging them, uh, uh, in, in December I bugged them, in, in January I bugged them, in February I bugged them, in March I bugged them, and I told them that was the last time I was calling them, so I'm trying to get in touch with uh, the Attorney General because they're falsifying uh, uh, certifications, they're not following through and sending uh, people to go get their state exams, uh, they're actually holding the money. Um, we were supposed to start... Uh, October the 7th. We didn't start until October the 14th, and then they tried to make me sign off on October the 7th. Uh, the doctor, her name is Mrs. Griggs, and there's a woman with, that works with her named Denise. These are two of the most slovenly, unprofessional women I've ever seen in my life. They are uh, retaliatory. They, uh, uh, not, I don't, I'm not gonna say this about Ms. Dr. Griggs because I don't know if it's her and uh, Denise, or if it's just Denise, but they are very retaliatory. Uh, when I try to ask a question, it's always, I'll get back with you. It's never, you know, okay, we're about to, uh, send you to go have your test done. Uh, the last I heard from them, they told me to pay for it myself, which I shouldn't see in how Detroit works, pay for me to go there and pay for, you know, 
me to have the test done. Now, Detroit Works, I call them back. They tell me I have to pay for it myself. So there's some bad things going on, and I'm saying that to say this. There are schools like Odyssey Education that's pumping out bad people. They're just letting them run through it. Uh, we, I read the book, but they skimmed through the book with us, and I think that, that was terrible in itself because I have 30 years uh, or better of uh, working in the medical industry, direct care, and, and, and things of that nature. Uh, that's why I asked a lot of questions and they didn't like that. So actually, I just went to the school so I can do refresher, see what was going on, what was updated, and take my state. I couldn't do that. So like I said, I'm trying to get in touch with the Attorney General. There's a lot of people out here that's trying to flim flam you. There's a lot of people out here that say that they are of God and they're not. We need to be on our guard. We need to watch out for each other. We need to know that if we are truly children of God, nothing can hurt us. And if it's God, if it, if this if it's God's will that something should befall us, then to God be the glory. We got all these punk Christians out here. Every time you stomp your toe, you crying. So how are you going to give your life up or lay your life down for your brother when as soon as something break out and they need the Christians, they are right. Oh, we're going to pray for you. No, he didn't say just pray. Jesus didn't just pray. Paul didn't just pray. These people didn't just pray. They put things into actions via God's plan. And that's what we need to be doing. I'm sick of you, um, oh my goodness, I'm sick of you women preachers. You are not supposed to be preaching the gospel. You are not supposed to be uh, uh, putting your authority over any man. I don't respect you, and I don't care for women preachers. You know, and I'm, and you know, people be like, well, you know, so and so, okay, I know them, but that don't mean I respect their title. I can love a person and not respect what they do. There is a difference. We need to learn how to stay in our lane. We're out of character. We're out of God's creation role. Man, uh, once God gave man dominion over this earth, we tore it up. We beat it down. We gave some of the power. We gave a lot of the power to the enemy. And then we sit up and say, why us? Okay, why not us? This has been going on for years. We all act like this is some new thing that happened when God said there's nothing new under the sun. And on that note, people, please be careful. Take care of yourself. Don't trust everybody and don't help everybody because everybody ain't in need of help. They're just trying to play you. So until then, I love you. Be safe and stay strong.